Thursday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly as the Lord had commanded him. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the dwelling was erected. It was Moses who erected the dwelling. He placed its pedestals, set up its boards, put in its bars, and set up its columns. He spread the tent over the dwelling and put the covering on top of the tent as the Lord had commanded him. He took the commandments and put them in the ark. He placed poles alongside the ark and set the propitiatory upon it. He brought the ark into the dwelling and hung the curtain veil, thus screening off the ark of the commandments as the Lord had commanded him. Then the cloud covered the meeting tent, and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Moses could not enter the meeting tent because the cloud settled down upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Whenever the cloud rose from the dwelling, the children of Israel would set out on their journey. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not go forward. Only when it lifted did they go forward. In the daytime, the cloud of the Lord was seen over the dwelling, whereas at night, fire was seen in the cloud by the whole house of Israel in all the stages of their journey. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is... How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God! My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God! Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God! How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God! Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God! I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore, and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. Thursday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Exodus 40, 16-21, and 34-38. We hear about how Moses erects the tent of meeting just as God had ordered him. He sets everything up, He places the ark in that tent of meeting, the ark being a box which contained some of the holy things that God had given to Israel. For example, we hear that the Ten Commandments are put in there. In other passages, we hear that a bit of the manna that the Israelites received in the desert is put there, as well as the staff of Aaron. Remember how the leaders of the tribe of Levi put their staffs into that box. The next day when they opened it, The only one which had flowered, which had blossomed, was Aaron's staff, which was made of almond wood. So in some of the prophetic messages, almond becomes a sign of the priestly dignity of the family of Aaron. Well, the Lord appears to the people of Israel as cloud during the day and as fire by night, leading them along their way. And the idea is that God is constantly guiding his people, constantly present with them, even if they don't always feel his presence. 
obviously the same message is true for us, that it's never that God has gone away. It's that we've busied our hearts. We fill them with the wrong things so that our hearts can't be open to the presence of God in our midst. The Gospel is from Matthew 13, 47-53. Jesus tells another parable that the kingdom of heaven is like a fisherman who throws his net in the sea, catches all sorts of fish, fish that can be eaten, and then what are called junk fish. And he separates what's good from what is not. And that's how it will be at the final judgment. This is a very important concept in the Gospel of Matthew, that we are responsible for our actions, and at the final judgment, will be separated like sheep and goats. That's a parable that appears in this gospel. Now, at the end, there's a saying that the good scribe is the one who can go to the closet and take out the old and take out the new and use both. Remember, this is being written for a Jewish Christian audience. So the good scribe is the one who can respect the law of Israel, the prophets, but also recognize that Jesus is their fulfillment. But we could also apply it to our own days. To be able to respect tradition, that which has been handed down to us by previous generations, but also to be able to be creative, to find new ways to proclaim the gospel and to live the gospel in our own times, in our own culture. And may God bless us. Thank you.